Hey guys, Jonathan Doyle with you here. Welcome to the Daily Message for Catholic Teachers. Hope you're doing okay wherever you're watching or listening to this. Please make sure you've subscribed. Hit the big subscribe button so I can get uh, the content to you on a regular basis. And today, we are going to jump in to a quote from the rather wonderful Father Jacques Philippe. Now, some of you will be familiar with this guy. He's been, um, I, I hate using language like this, but he's kind of become a bit of a Catholic mystical priestly prayer rock star in the last few years um, in the pantheon of great Catholic priest rock stars but uh, really writing some beautiful stuff and my spiritual director suggested that I read him and my wife Karen's been reading him for a long time so I want to share with you a beautiful quote today uh, from some of his work that I hope you're going to love we do not have to become saints by our own power we have to learn how to let God make us into saints. Anybody that has seen me live over the years knows that I have this crazy idea that we can become saints or that we're meant to become saints. So yesterday I went shoe shopping with my uh, eldest daughter, and uh, which was awesome. I learned a lot. I grew up with old brothers, so taking teenage girls shopping for shoes is a whole new thing. We had a great time, but we ended up talking about you know, the purpose of the Christian life as you do with your teenage daughter while shoe shopping. And, you know, we, we talked about this idea about becoming saints. And I, I began to teach her. I said, you know, people have these ideas that, you know, being a saint means that you're super pious and you never sin. And I told her that, you know, there are Catholic saints who have been prostitutes, Catholic saints that have been involved in serious crime since Stephen by every definition of law, was an accessory to first-degree murder. He held the clothes um, of the Pharisees when they... Um, when, when Saint, sorry, sorry uh, Paul held the clothes of the Pharisees while St. Stephen was stoned to death. And then Paul goes on to become one of the greatest Christian figures in history. So if we want to, the first thing we need to do is disabuse ourselves of the notion that uh, to be a saint, you can't have a past. In fact, many of you would know that many of our greatest saints had a definite past. You know, um, Ignatius of Loyola, you know, fought and probably killed people. Um, Augustine fathered illegitimate children. So if perfect sanctity before conversion was was the criteria for sainthood we would have a lot less saints so let that be an encouragement i'm not encouraging you to go and do those things by the way let's just be clear it's important so what we find is that you know we don't have to be perfect to begin the journey and the second part is what does it mean to be a saint i think essentially what it means is that we become fully or we allow God to make us fully who he always saw that we could be. And look, I know some of you, could, we could go deep in all sorts of other theological definitions, but I think it's this process by which God removes all of that which is not who he wants us to be. And what we're left with is this beautiful... I mean, there's so many images for this, right? Like if you read John of the Cross in detail, St. John of the Cross... He gives this example of like a, a log that gets put on a fire. And he said the log goes through all these stages, right? If you think about a log on a fire, we had a fire here at uh, last night. Uh, not in the studio. I mean, uh, at the house, <laughs> outdoors with friends. <laughs> we didn't set fire to the house. Okay. And you put a log on and the first thing that happens is you see, you know, it, the smoke all comes out of it. And then over time, there might be water that sizzles on the end of the log and water begins to get driven out of the timber. And sometimes you'll see insects or, you know, cockroaches or bugs might come flying out from under the bark. And then over time, the log transforms, doesn't it? Until eventually the log literally becomes like the fire. So eventually the, the, the log changes its state and becomes one with what is consuming it. And John of the Cross used that as a metaphor for the spiritual life, is that there's a process by which God is removing the impurities and the brokenness from our lives and transforming us into himself. And of course, Scripture tells us that he wants to transform us into the image of his son. Anyway, I don't want to go too deep down that theological rabbit hole. But I just want to be really clear that the purpose of the Christian life is to become a saint. 
is to get home to Jesus, to get home to heaven and bring as many people as possible because they have lots of room. Mansions even. <laughs> so that's the purpose of the Christian life. And then we're called to become saints. And the process by which it happens was beautifully articulated by Father Henry Newen, who said that God's doing it through, here's the term, the concrete circumstances of our lives. The real circumstances of our lives. So what I've been saying to Catholic teachers for many years is this. is It's like your vocation, your work as a Catholic educator, the difficult people, the difficult students, that is the place, the concrete circumstances of your life where God is inviting you to holiness, to sanctity. And of course, we're broken, right? So we resist it. And that's okay because we need grace. But the first thing I want you to do is begin to realize that you were called into this vocation of being a Catholic teacher. And God is allowing these circumstances to be an invitation for you to grow in holiness. You know, Karen and I celebrated our 21st wedding anniversary last week and my daughter and I were talking about it yesterday and and I said, you know, this is the beauty of God's plan for marriage and family in all our imperfections and in all our brokenness as a, as a couple and as individuals and as a family and all the imperfections we have. But it's this daily grind, this reality of living closely with people that shapes you or breaks you, right? And a Catholic school is a community of people that are on that on a similar kind of journey, right? You're rubbing up against each other. So two things. First is the reminder that I want you to begin to see the concrete circumstances of your daily vocational life, whether it's marriage, parenting, single life, religious life, and then your practical vocation as an educator as ways in which God is allowing circumstances to invite you to sanctity of life. The second thing is if we go back to um, Father Jacques Philippe's quote, is that, do you notice how he says that it's not up to us to make ourselves saints? Because if, if that was true, we'd be somewhere between uh, what they call Neo-Pelagianism and Nietzschean you know, will to power. Um, if you're not familiar with those terms, there's an ancient heresy of Pelagianism, which was that Christ has given us everything that we need to be holy, but the problem is that we're not trying hard enough. We just need to work harder. So it's a striving struggle, right, which which doesn't have a lot of room for grace. And then on the other, you know, then you've got Nietzsche and will to power, which is that we just got to, that we've got to vision what we want. We just got to, you know, use our will to create the reality that we want. And the longer I live, here's what I think, we're broken, we're really broken and we carry all these wounds. And if you know me, if you'd know me over my life journey, I used to hate that idea. I, used to, I did not like hearing people say it. I thought it was weak. But the longer I've lived and, and wrestled with all this stuff, I'm like, we're broken. Some of us are less broken than others. Some of us are really broken. And I'm sure you can think of a couple of people at your school that fit that category. But we're loved anyway and grace is available it's the beauty of our Catholic faith is that it, it you know of all the faiths of all the splintering Christian sects and professions and all the world religions I, I still think that Catholicism gets it as close to reality as as we can get right because it's basically it sees the truth of what we're like and what we're capable of and that we need grace and that if we put all that stuff together and accept it, then God can do something really astounding. And he does, right? Because that's how you get Teresa of Lisieux. That's how you get, you know, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. That's how you get Blessed Solanus Casey. You get these simple little people that get it and they get the brokenness part and then they just throw wide the gates to grace and incredible stuff happens. So look, I didn't want to be this long, but... The purpose of your life is to get home to heaven and to bring as many people as possible with you, including your students. The place that happens is in the vocational state of life that you live. And for you watching and listening to this, it's also the vocational state of being a Catholic educator. How cool is that? That God has created the circumstances by which he wants you to become holy. And if that's what he's done, then he's not thrown you to the wolves. He's not left you there just to figure this out on your own. We just need to we just need to, to
to, to, to reorient our vision. We need to reorient our sense of what's actually happening. It's not a job. These aren't just terrible people. These aren't just ungrateful students. Oh, right, Jesus, this difficult child is your invitation to me. Doesn't mean we accept abuse. Doesn't mean we accept intolerable circumstances. But it, if we begin to shift our perception of what might be happening, powerful stuff can happen. All right, please make sure you're subscribed. There should be a link here to something free. I usually try and give you free stuff, so check out the links wherever you're hearing or seeing this, and uh, please share this with people. My name is Jonathan Doyle. I'll have another message for you tomorrow.